As every good science class starts, we are going to start our class with metric units and metric conversions. So, when we think about these things, what we want to do is we really want to kind of say, is my answer reasonable? So we need to keep in mind about these things. Are they really big or are they really small? Now, a kilometer, kilometer's big, okay? Kilometers, you walk them out and, you know, after you've walked a kilometer, you know you've walked a kilometer, especially if it's 100 degrees outside. But a nanometer, is a nanometer big or small? You've heard about nanotechnology, so you kind of have an idea that nanotechnology is small, and a nanometer is really small. In fact, it's so small that I can't even make those letters small enough so that you can't see them. Nanometer is like the size of, uh, 10 nanometers is about the size of an atom. Milliseconds, you know, we say, hey, I'll be done in a millisecond. That's, that's like when we're really exaggerating. But a millisecond is super fast. And we're going to try to time that, and you're going to fail miserably because your stopwatch doesn't even go out to the millisecond. And the fastest I've seen anybody go start, stop on a stopwatch is 20 milliseconds. So see if you can beat that. So we have four basic SI units. Now notice metric and SI are slightly different. In metric, we're used to talking about grams, but in SI and in physics, we're going to use the kilogram because physicists study big things. They study things like planets, trains, um, people. These all have masses of kilograms. We're going to calculate your mass in kilograms. The length is a meter, so that's the same as metric. Time is a second. And then the, the last basic SI unit is the unit of charge, which is a coulomb. Um, a coulomb is actually a pretty big amount, but that's what we use to make... All of our other charge units have to do with a coulomb. So you don't have to know that one so much right now. That's a second semester idea. We're not going to deal with coulombs till second semester. So when we do metric conversions, we are generally converting from one metric unit to another metric unit. And some of these metric units have a prefix in front. Of them. So you have like millimeters. You've heard of a millimeter. Um, you have centimeters, you have kilograms, you have grams, you have kilograms. So how do you convert between grams and kilograms? You need to know the meaning of the metric prefixes. So these are the metric prefixes we're going to do, and each one has its own meaning. Tera means 10 to the minus 12, or 10 to the positive 12. Giga means 10 to the 9. Mega is a million, 10 to the 6. Are you starting to see a pattern here? You should start to see a pattern. Pause, figure it out. You're right, they're going down by threes. Kilo is 10 to the 3rd. Centi doesn't follow the pattern, but we use centimeters so often that we're going to go ahead and talk about them. Centi is 10 to the minus 2. And then we start up with the pattern again, milli. 10 to the minus 3, micro, 10 to the minus 6, nano, 10 to the minus 9, and pico, 10 to the minus 12. So we're going from 10 to the positive 12 at the top to 10 to the negative 12 down here at the bottom. And so which ones are we going to use the most often? We're going to use kilo, centi, milli, and micro the most often. We're still going to use nanometers. We're still we're going to have picofarads. How about that for a unit? We're going to have picofarads. We're going to have megahertz and gigahertz and we're going to have terawatts. But these four these four you should be able to go kilo 10 to the third, a thousand. You know there's a thousand grams in a kilogram just boom and you should be able to make the conversions to the base units there very easily. 
Okay, one of the per reasons why we might um, get an answer wrong when we're solving it is that we haven't standardized our unit. So that's kind of one of the things, if you solve a problem in the future and you get the wrong answer, double check and make sure you standardized your units because that's oftentimes the mistake. So if you're given a mass in grams or kilograms, you have to convert that to kilograms. Okay, because remember kilograms is our basic SI unit. So we have to convert that to kilograms. Your lengths have to be converted to meters and your times have to be converted to seconds. So let's go do a couple of these conversions. Okay, so if we're given a length in centimeters or kilometers, we do have to convert that to meters. So let's say we had 12.5 kilometers and we're trying to convert that to meters. Okay, this is a form of dimensional analysis. The horizontal bar here means to divide. The vertical bar here means to multiply. So you're going to multiply everything across the top here, and you're going to divide by everything that's on the bottom. Or you can multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then take the top and divide by the bottom. There's a couple ways. Different people do it different ways, whatever they're comfortable with. So we need kilometers to cancel. So they cancel when the two units are diagonal from each other. So we're going to put kilometers down here at the bottom, and we want to convert to meters. Okay? So we know that one kilometer and kilo means 10 to the third, one kilometer is 10 to the third meeting, so meters. So we're taking the prefix kilo and we're replacing it with what it means. So the M stays there, but we're just replacing it with what it means. And so this is gonna come out to 12,500 meters. That was easy enough. Okay, if we're going to give, be given a mass in grams or milligrams, we have to convert that to kilograms. So let's do like a milligrams one, so we have to do a two-step conversion. Let's say we have 250 milligrams, and we want to go all the way to kilograms. So we're looking for kilograms as our final answer. Okay, remember, we're multiplying across the top and dividing by what's on the bottom. We need milligrams to cancel. So milligrams is going to come down here on the bottom. Now we don't know off the top of our head how many milligrams are in a kilogram. But we do know about milligrams and grams. So we can go to grams first and we'll put grams here on the top. We're always going to put one with the prefix. So one milligram. And milli means, go look it up on your list. What do you have in your notes? Yes, when I say go look it up in your notes, I want you to go look it up in notes. You've got it just above. 10 to the minus 3. So we're going to take milli and replace it with its meaning. And so milligrams have canceled. And then we still need to get to kilograms. So we need to cancel our grams. So we're going to put grams diagonal from grams. So we're going to put grams down here and kilograms up here. The one is going to go with the prefix, and then kilo means 10 to the third. So we're going to do mathematically, we're going to go 250 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 10 to the third. And that's going to come out to 0 0.00025 kilograms, or 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms. Now one of the ways we know our answer is reasonable is you always have more of the smaller units. Let me write that down real quick. So since milligrams are smaller than kilograms, we would expect our milligram answer, 250 milligrams, to be bigger than our kilogram answer because you have more of the smaller 
unit. So that's one way to check. Is my answer reasonable? Okay, last one. Let's say we need we have a time. Your times always have to be in seconds. Okay? And a lot of times we just when we're reading the problem, we gloss over that and we don't quite catch that we needed to convert our time. So we'll make an error that way. Let's say we have um, 2.4 hours. Okay? And we want to find out how many seconds that is because that's our basic SI unit. Okay? We need hours to cancel, so the hours are going to go down on the bottom. And we don't know how many seconds are in an hour off the top of our head. But we do know how many minutes are in an hour. So let's convert to minutes first. We know that one hour is 60 minutes. So see how I'm kind of reading this? One hour is, this bar can be read as is or equals 60 minutes. So our hours have canceled. And now we can go from minutes to seconds. We know that one minute is 60 seconds. So when we do that math, we're going to go 2.4 times 60 times 60, and that's going to come out to 8,640 seconds. One little factoid that might make your life a little bit easier when you go to do this conversion, 60 times 60 is 3,600, 3,600. So you could, on your handy dandy little equation sheet, write down one hour is 3,600 seconds. Now make sure you don't do 360, 3,600 seconds. So you can put that on your handy dandy equation sheet. You can put your basic SI units on your handy dandy equation sheet. And you can put all of these metric prefixes on your handy dandy equation sheet because you're going to want to refer to them throughout the year. And you know, we're not going to run into nano and pico until second semester, but it'd be nice to have them all in one place so that you can have that. All right, physics is fun. Let's get started. Have a good day. Bye.